the uh, elements of the threat that we face from Russia and China um, is that uh, they are very active in space, uh, they have nuclear weapons, uh, they have a whole range of ways that they could uh, use those against us. But uh, as during the Cold War, uh, we have stresses with both uh, countries now, but uh, uh, nobody thinks that we're on the verge of uh, a nuclear war. And in any case, both must see that we have a deterrent and that if they should attack us, we could retaliate. And that was uh, true all during um, uh, the Cold War. Um, it's true today. Um, Iran uh, may have a nuclear weapon, although the consensus generally is that they don't quite yet, but uh, they could well within somewhere between a few months and a few years. And uh, they have orbited already to three satellites. Um, so once they have the ability to operate in space, particularly even with just a simple polar orbit satellite, um, and a nuclear weapon, uh, they could do what North Korea can do today, which is to orbit a nuclear weapon in, in a polar orbit inside, um, uh, uh, or rather to or orbit a nuclear weapon uh, inside uh, a satellite and detonate that weapon out in space whenever they want. And to do that is not hard. Uh, putting a satellite into orbit is the first thing both the Russians and the Americans did in space because it's comparatively easy to a lot of other things that one would want to do. It's much easier than firing a ballistic missile nearly halfway around the world and hitting a target. If all you have to do is detonate something that is already in orbit, it's relatively simple, but you need a nuclear weapon and you need the capacity to put a satellite in orbit. The North Koreans have had both of those for several years. They could orbit a weapon today. Uh, they could detonate it uh, when it's over the United States. And I'm afraid this is one of those situations in which we drag our Canadian friends into a problem uh, because if they detonated either the North Koreans or perhaps before long, the Iranians detonated that nuclear weapon above North America, they could take out the electric grid for both Canada and the United States. Now, why would this happen this way? Uh, the sun has been bombarding the earth with uh, electromagnetically charged radio waves for about oh, something just over 4 billion years. So this is not a new problem for Earth. On the other hand, there wasn't anybody here for most of that uh, time to worry about it. Um, the uh, problem is that if a nuclear weapon, and it could be a simple and relatively small nuclear weapon, is detonated above an area on the land, two types of electromagnetic pulses are, are generated. There's a short wavelength pulse that would basically take out your and my cell phones and everything else like that within line of sight. Um, and that, um, uh, of course, is a very serious problem, but even more serious is that it generates a long wavelength. These are the gamma rays. They, 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 they generate a long wavelength set of magnetized radio waves. And those um, are picked up by the transmission lines and run along the transmission lines, knocking out the transformers as they go. The transformers are the heart of our electric grid. Without the transformers, you don't have a grid. The transformers are what step up the voltage for it to be taken a long distance on the grid and then step it down so it can be distributed to electricity users. Um, so once the North Koreans had nuclear weapons and a ballistic missile that could put something into orbit, they could do this to us 
and we're not too far away, I'm afraid, from the Iranians being able to do it. Um, now, what would that mean to the citizens of the United States and Canada? Knocking out the electric grid, and this would be something that would last for months to years because it takes a long time to rebuild the transformers and they have to be built for specific locations. Uh, and you know, they're built in Europe and in Germany and in uh, South Korea, um, not even in the United States, not the big ones. Uh, so we, uh, if we get those knocked out, we're talking about several years before we could begin to replace the grid. And that's several years in which we would, I'm afraid, on both sides of our northern border, be living in a uh, 19th century uh, agricultural world, and very few of us uh, have uh, uh, enough uh, plow horses and seeds to live comfortably in a 19th century agricultural world. Why would do I say that? Because the Congressional Commission report in the U.S. that went into this matter in some detail a few years ago says that we have 18 critical infrastructures in the United States, food, water, uh, the uh, electric grid, of course, uh, financial, medical, um, everything is tied into electric transmissions of one kind or another. If you knock that out, you don't kill people with the original blast out in space that just generates the electromagnetic waves, but because all of your other infrastructures depend on the electric grid, you don't have water pumps anymore. You don't have gasoline pumps. You don't have uh, uh, food deliveries after a few days, etc. And unfortunately, uh, that situation, if it persists for months to years, according to the Congressional Commission assessment, um, the first year alone would end up uh, killing about two-thirds of the people in the United States. Uh, um, that's the low estimate. The other estimate is would end up killing about 90 percent of the people uh, in the United States. Um, that um, um, is uh, a tragedy worse than any that has ever befallen humankind.